como de sistema de para una persona puede conseguir los micas. Ahí en, en toda la 26 son como unos, unos 20. Es mucho dinero. Y ellos necesitan pagar un impuesto por los gangas también. Sí, le pagan a los likes de ahí de la 26. Si estás vendiendo estos micas en la calle, estás pagando a los gangas. Ellos pagan a los gangas para que no tengan problemas en la calle y nadie dice a nadie nada y todo está seguro. Fake green cards, driver's licenses, and social security cards. It's a market cornered by the gangs of Little Village on Chicago's southwest side. Criminal Intelligence Unit investigator Mike Davis is on the trail of one ID ring in particular. As he gathers intel from a jailhouse informant, Davis launches a sting operation with the Cook County Sheriff's Vice Squad that same week. They'll use street informants in order to make contact with the ID ring. Do you know what is the local or not? Seguro es 31 y... Maybe we can do a loose tail on him. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah, he said, follow me. Yeah, he said, same thing we're saying right now. Yeah, 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 okay. Right, okay, I mean, yo creo que nosotros puedes cigarte. Right now, we're probably about a mile away from the jail. It's a straight shot. It's 26 streets. So. Yeah, Bill, he talked to the guy on the phone, so now we're, we're uh, I guess we're headed there. We're almost in front of that location. Davis and Commander Mike Anton stake out a block frequented by phony ID vendors. They're sitting on this spot out. Yeah, they are. Is this him right here? The only one? Yeah. While an informant negotiates a deal with their target. He's talking to a guy right now, Bill. That's how he said probably about 5'8". Uh, Looks like he's maybe about 220. Got blue shorts on, white shoes. Can you get photos of the guy? For. Their goal, to make multiple purchases and build a conspiracy case. There's a lot of money being made there, and what's that funded? It's not like, well, you know, that money's only going to go towards more fake IDs. It's, it's going to go to other nefarious things that they're doing. In an hour and a half, two hours, you're getting a green card and you're getting a license. Looking at a real license, looking at the fake one that we purchased, you cannot tell the difference. Who's going to dispute it, right? Look at the... Uh It's got the hologram on yeah, it. Yeah, the sleeve is good. Yeah, it's real good. The gang's money-making schemes don't end there. They're known to shake down local business owners as well. The gangs are probably running many more legitimate businesses on that street. So, again, paying like it's a tax, so they won't incur any problems from any of the gang. I mean, this is something like out of, you know, the 30s or 40s, you'd see, like, the Italian Mafia run. You know, now it's the street gangs of Chicago. It's organized crime, essentially. Some of these people are either intimidated or just fear them enough that they say, you know what, I just keep my mouth shut. All it is is just a form of terrorism, because that's what these guys work off of, is fear and intimidation. And if I gotta, if I gotta work with a couple of them to try to slow them down, that's what I gotta do. Gangs like the Latin Kings and the 2-6, which call Little Village home, can be notoriously difficult to infiltrate. That's why investigators at Cook County Jail try to flip key players when they're at their most vulnerable. Yeah. We're picking up on detaining active member of a street gang, hardcore, recently has been uh, stabbed up by uh, the opposition multiple times in the stomach. What we're going to try to do is get him give us the information, hopefully, that can assist with some cases out in the streets. You okay? You look better. You look tough. The other day when I came to see you, nerve damage? How many times they stand here? What neighborhood? Were you in your neighborhood or oppositions? Opposition. Did you know? So what were you doing? You have to get stabbed. You're laying on the ground? Fifteen. Why do you guys got so much beef with those guys for? Something personal? This inmate, who will call Dante, faces a battery charge that could put him behind bars for several years. Like most detainees at County, he's still awaiting trial. He could cut a plea deal, but only if he cooperates with authorities first. 
Your face was on here one time, you know that? That's it, man. You listening to me? Your face was right here. Problem child, area one top targets. Anybody that comes into the system, it's an area one target. I'm gonna come and pay you a visit. Guess what gang war gets you? We stabbed up, how many times? Left for dead. You think he's not gonna retaliate? What did he say? Whatever stays on the street, it's gonna be handled on the street. So you know already, he ain't gonna tell me who did it. What, what's the war about? I mean, what is it? What do you guys commit all these crimes for? All the gangs want our territory, but we just fight for what we think is right, which is, you know, keep our neighborhood the way it is. It's just when other people come through and we have to use violent force, it's, it's that's when stuff gets hectic. What about his family? Don't you think of the families? Nothing? It's not even in, 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 in your head. To me, it's kind of like being in, in, in the military, you know how to brainwash you. Uh, but when you first hit land, basically when you first turn, they brainwash you not to care. Is it a bragging right that guys just went over across the, to the opposition and shot up their block and they come back and brag about it? Mm -hmm. Pretty much, that's what they do. I, I figured this would, you're probably one of the number one, probably the number one guys that does that. I'm one of the guys that trusts that. So is it fair to say this guy here is probably beat? Yeah, he got, he got bragging rights. He got bragging rights? Yeah, bragging a lot. Couple homicides under his belt? Oh, uh, yeah, a lot. Couple? He got a lot of everything. Have you, you, witness, you witnessed any of them? I can imagine. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can imagine you did. You just don't feel comfortable in telling me. Yeah, I don't. I mean, how, how important, how important is it is, is to go home to your kids? How important do you really want to do it? Do you want to go in halfway or fully? Right now you're in iffy iffy, right? Quarter. You're quarter, because you still don't have no trust in me. But when you're sitting in here for a little bit of time, you're going to probably say, you know what, let me talk to do it again. Uh, right now you're just feeling out the waters, but you can't feel out the waters because... It's still a little chill. I'm waiting for it to get a little quiet. <laughs> you say it like that. Don't get found guilty because then it's going to be too late because I can't do nothing for you. While Dante weighs his options, investigator Mike Davis continues to work with paid street informants on a long-term sting operation. He and the sheriff's spy squad are targeting a counterfeit ID ring. Right now we're just trying to identify the players and find out exactly where they're printing the IDs. Right there, right? Isn't that where they met? One week after making their first undercover deal, an informant helps them set up a second buy. Whoever's got an eyeball, call out what's going on. The more fake green cards, driver's licenses, and social security cards that they purchase, the stronger their case becomes. No, no te preocupes. Don't listen. Tu quieres que nosotros consigurte o vas irte por tu casa? But this is not the first time that authorities have tried taking down a little village ID ring. Hace dos años, cuando de policía grave de discalmo, estás viviendo en Chicago o no? Te recuerdo esto tiempo o no? Sí. Para cuánto tiempo está cerrado los micas? Boom. Después de policía cerré de discalmo. ¿Cuántos días después que las personas... Uh, ¿Empezaron a ver otra vez? No, no. <laughs> the same day. <laughs> yeah, the same day. So it didn't stop anything. <laughs> there have been numerous raids at that location, and to my knowledge, they're, they're still up and running. And there's, there's more spots, yeah. Uh, people are telling us all the time. We try to look into all of them, uh, but uh, it's, it's difficult. I know it got real hairy on the news here in the immigrant community. You know, people were really angry that those businesses got shut down. It really didn't dissuade the community into thinking that anything really wrong was happening. Yet Davis believes that people might feel differently if they knew the whole story. How much coke did you get caught with? 132 kilos. Outside of the Latin Kings, who else would you drop off to? This right here is a hub. I'm talking pounds and tons of drugs. Little Village is a very hot spot for the entire Midwest. What cartel were you working for? I can't tell you, man. They'll dig up the grandma and kill her again, man. These guys don't mess around. This right here is a hub for huge, massive quantities of drugs. 
you're talking about semi load where they can put in maybe 75 kilos, 100 kilos. You have a lot of illegal immigrants coming here who are hungry, so they go to any extreme, you know. You're getting a green card and you're getting a license in really any name that you want, any picture that you want. It's organized crime, essentially. If you don't have a CI to bring you in this neighborhood, you're not going to be able to do nothing. Somewhere you're not supposed to be, you know that. But I don't got nothing on me, man. It don't matter. You know, you're somewhere you're not supposed to be. That's how you're gonna take my knife? Y'all yeah, just gonna keep it, man. Come on, let me just get my knife back. Yeah, but you have a weapon, man. What you thought? It ain't even a weapon. It's in my four fingers. What do you think that's it? It ain't a weapon. It's my it's protection. It's defense. Ain't that ask me? I got defense. You really wanna argue with me on that? Come on. Who do you think's gonna win that one? As long as the blade is four fingers wide, it's supposed to be legal. For them to carry, but it's still a weapon. 
higher. And you're 17. Hanging out in the street all day, riding your bike in a gang infested area, you're gonna find trouble. Whether it's gonna be the police or some opposing gang member's gonna come and it's gonna shoot you up, you're gonna find problems. The little village area is the largest area in the city that's controlled by gangs, Latin Kings and Tussins. This predominantly uh, Latin King area goes all the way down to 21st Street. California, and once you hit Ridgeway, it's uh, 2 6. The violence is, is unreal over here. You live in a certain area right away, these individuals assume you're a gang member, you're affiliated. It's just guilty by association or, or guilty by where you live. You gotta know who to look for, you gotta know who drives what. If you don't know who's fighting who and who's shooting at who, you die. If you don't know who you can and who you can't talk to, Little Village represents more than just battle lines within the Hispanic community. For decades, it's been a beacon of opportunity. Generations of immigrants, both legal and illegal, have come to work in family-owned businesses here, many of them along 26th Street. 26th Street is the second most revenue uh, street in the city of Chicago, right behind Michigan Avenue, believe it or not. It's all small businesses, but they definitely bring a lot of revenue into the city. Uh, living in this area for as long as I did, the people are some of the greatest, and this is a, the hard, hard-working, uh, older people. They came to this country, you know, make a better life. I mean, if you see in the news, life in Mexico ain't all, you know, a cup of tea over there. You have a lot of illegal immigrants coming here who are hungry. They were born and raised in nothing but poverty, and they have that hunger to make money. So they go to any extreme, you know? That hunger drives some individuals to organized crime. Go ahead, huh? Yeah. Okay. Bring it to your office. Yeah, yeah we'll do that later. Good information. At Cook County Jail, investigator Mike Davis is seeking intel about a black market industry in Little Village. Dime como de sistema para una persona puede conseguir los micas. He says that when you walk down 26th Street, they got people just kind of flashing me. So, much, mucho gente así, son haciendo esto. Ahí en, en toda la 26 son como uno, uno 20. Davis is in pursuit of a counterfeit rig that sells fake green cards and driver's licenses to illegal immigrants. It's one of many local ID rigs that, all together, reap millions in profits. What they'll do is, this is like the universal sign for, they call MICA, which is like license or ID. He's got the help of Mexican-born informants both on the street and inside the jail, including this man, whom we'll call Joaquin. He quantified what I got for the the mica. He says what happens is you give him a picture and um, they go. It takes them a couple hours to do it, and when they come back, that's when you pay for your ID. They, they always recommend a photo place as well. Quantos do, quantos ellos son ganando cada día? Each person will make over two thousand, two thousand dollars every day. Siete días cada semana, no? <laughs> yeah, seven days a week. With an estimated quarter million illegal immigrants living in the Chicago area, there's no shortage of customers. Yet many of them choose to ignore where their money is really going. Los jefes de negocio son conectados con alguien. Los gangas, personas político, la mafia, son con quien trabajando con quien. Con los gangas. Con los gangas, huh? We'll have your guy go get the cards with them, bring them back, yeah, we know where it's and meet Pat somewhere else. We're trying to create a conspiracy and try to get as many players that are involved as possible. Well, he's going inside the laundromat now. He's going to go get it. Who's going to dispute it, right? 